Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back to my course Aspects of Biochemical Engineering. In the last uh, lecture, I tried to give the information on different bioproducts. As you know, bioproducts of uh, different, there are different varieties. One we can different classifications we have. We have low, low value, high volume products, medium value, medium volume products, and high value and low volume products. Now, on the basis of cost, this product may be uh, classified. Now, today I will be studying one very interesting topic, the, which is very essential for mass and energy balance of any kind of biochemical processes. The topic that I am going to discuss that is stoichiometry of biochemical processes. Now, what do you mean by stoichiometry? Stoichiometry we means that uh, interrelationship different component present in the reaction mixture and also it gives the information that uh, how much uh, that heat evolve that we have in the biochemical system as you know that uh, in the biochemical process most of the biochemical processes they are exothermic in nature so exothermic means they are heat liberating so, most of the biochemical processes are usually operated at ambient temperature and atmospheric pressure. So, it is uh, close to 30, 35 degree centigrade. Now, particularly since we are in the tropical country uh, during summer, summer, the temperature rises to as high as 40, 45 degree centigrade. So, naturally since we have heat evolution in this particular bioreactor or biochemical processes. So, we should have more cooling arrangement. Question comes, how much cooling arrangement is required? That can be determined if you find out how much is evolved in the biochemical process. So, stoichiometry not only give you the information of intermediate molecular relationship of the different component present in the reaction mixture, but also heat evolve in this process. And also, it gives another information which is very important in the biochemical process that is the validity of the experimental result. Because we carry out some kind of <coughs> experiments in the laboratory and uh, naturally the results that we get that how to evaluate that uh, whether the, the experimental data that I am reporting that is we are reporting that is right or wrong. So, these are the three different information we can give from the, we can get from the stoichiometry of bioprocess. Now, <coughs> here if you look at so what I told it is like this that uh, <coughs> that the the stoichiometry of the biochemical process give the following information study of quantitative relationship between among the reactant use and the product forms of a chemical reaction or mutual relationship and interlimitation inter limitation within the uh, biochemical system. That means, what I want to point out how much of the substrate molecule gives how much of product that theoretically that you can find out from the stoichiometry. Then now, then another thing I told you the validity of experimental results and, uh, and third one is the heat evolve particularly in the aerobic fermentation process. Now, law of what do you mean by law of conservation of mass? Conservation of mass if you look at here that is rate of rate of substrate inflow and rate of substrate outflow and this is passing through a system like this. Now, the that means a law of uh, conservation of mass that nothing can be uh, destroyed, nothing can be cured. The overall balance of the process that should be remaining same. Now, here look, look, if you look at the mass um, in through the system boundaries and minus mass out through the system boundaries and plus mass generated within the system 
minus mass consumed within the system is equal to mass accumulation within the system. This is uh, this is called conservation of mass. The ultimately that should remain same. Now that uh, the one uh, when you do the stoichiometry of the bioprocess, that we shall have to do uh, some elemental analysis, and through this elemental analysis we can find out how much of substrate molecule reacts with how much of uh, uh, A B C D how how much of A reacts with how much of B uh, reacts to give how much of C and how much of D. So, this is this is you can you have some kind of elemental analysis we have. Now, if you look at this elemental balance the material balance if you look at material balance of the biological reaction can be easily written within the composition of substrate product and cellular mass are known. Because so you know that in the biological system Oh, uh, because since we are talking about the bio system, what is happening in the bio system? You are putting your substrate, then you are getting the product. Now, when you get the products, your products may be of different, either in the form of cell mass or maybe if it is cell mass, mostly you get the cell mass. If you are other than cell mass, so you get cell mass as well as the product. Now, the usually the electron proton balance are required in addition to elemental balance to determine the stoichiometric coefficient of the this I, I shall discuss in details how you can find out the stoichiometric coefficient of the biochemical processes. This is very interesting. Today determination of the composition of the cellular composition is the major problem. So, you what we what we do usually we, we assume the that kind of cellular composition of the biomass. This is C H 1.8 O 1.05 and N 0.2. It is find within 5 percent limitations. It gives the empirical uh, that uh, formula like this of the cell mass. So, another very important thing is one mole of biological material is defined as 1 gram atom of carbon that is C uh, H alpha O beta and N delta. Now, let me explain that because you know suppose we are talking about glucose C 6 H 12 O 6 this is we call it glucose. Now, when you when you write this glucose in the form of <coughs> this 1 gram atom of carbon how you can write this is C H 2 O 6. So, 1 gram atom carbon is of glucose is like this. This is 1 gram atom glucose when you use it as a substrate. Am I right? So, uh, so the, this is the, the similarly it is applicable suppose uh, we, we any any compounds when you determine the empirical formula we can easily convert in the terms of 1 gram atom of carbon. This we can easily con convert in, in, in terms of that, that is not very difficult. Now, here is the, uh, 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 let me show you the macroscopic biomass balance of the microbial system concerning the biomass uh, production and another product can be written in the original form. So, you know that uh, when you write any kind of stoichiometry of the bioprocess, it is essential that we should have some preliminary information on the system. As for example, I want to point out suppose I want to we want to produce some kind of Baker cyst. Now, in the Baker cyst fermentation process, we are targeting to produce the biomass only. We are not we are not targeting uh, maybe carbon dioxide is a kind of a byproduct of the system. As you know the carbon dioxide that produced in the Baker is fermentation process or in case of ethanol fermentation process is we have more or less in the purified form and it is used for the production of dry ice. So, so, so commonly that how we can write this equation. If you, if you look at this is the empirical formula of substrate. This is C H M O L. This is the substrate. Now, when you talk about biomass 
uh, we required some kind of nitrogen source. So, usually we put nitrogen in the form of ammonia. So, we can consider a mole of ammonia that is required. Then, then if it is the aerobic system, so aerobic system we required molecular oxygen. So, we can write BO2, this is molecular. So, and in what we get, we get the products like biomass, this is the empirical formula of biomass, this is the empirical formula of uh, products. So, Y c is the Y c moles of uh, gram atom of biomass and Y p gram atom of product that is equal to now it is kind of carbon balance. You can see that 1 mole of carbon is converted to Y c moles of biomass and Y p moles of uh, product. So, what will be the carbon dioxide? 1 minus Y c minus Y p this C O 2 and plus C H 2. So, so but suppose we want to we want to produce some kind of biomass. So, but we we can ignore the other than the product formation here. The product formation that, that we have that we can ignore. But uh, if we if we want to produce some kind of product, as for example, the ethanol fermentation process or cytic acid fermentation process or penicillin fermentation process, then we can ignore this uh, biomass formation. But uh, if it is the anaerobic system, we know anaerobic system that uh, that amount of cell mass produced is, is drastically reduced as compared to that of aerobic system. So we can we if we ignore that, your relationship will be uh, uh, simple. You know, one thing is that this oxygen will not be required. The nitrogen also mostly will not be required because because if you do, if you don't consider biomass other in the product formation so your 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 carbon source is mostly converted to your product if product doesn't contain any nitrogen and also carbon dioxide and water this is uh, but in case of aerobic fermentation process when you consider the cell mass then you can ignore the product formation this you can ignore and you can write this is the substrate this is the ammonia this is the carbon dioxide this is oxygen molecular oxygen this is biomass carbon dioxide and water so this kind of suppose i can i can give you another example suppose in the anaerobic digestion process the organic biomass organic mass is converted to methane and carbon dioxide now when organic mass converted to methane and carbon dioxide how what how how they, what we considered since it is the anaerobic process we should not consider any kind of oxygen because it doesn't it is oxygen is harmful for the system and also the anaerobic system we don't uh, produce a significant amount of biomass so nitrogen source is also uh, we do not consider <clears throat> that what we considered since uh, this organic residue is a, uh, is a polymeric material. <clears throat> so, we we required water molecule for the hydrolysis of this uh, initial hydrolysis breakdown of the uh, polymeric molecule. Then uh, when you get the monomer it is converted to methane and carbon dioxide. So, what will be the equation you have? You have substrate plus water equal to methane plus carbon dioxide plus that carbon dioxide that you will get in the system maybe with a hydrogen ion that excess hydrogen ion might be present there. This is how you can write the balance equation. <coughs> now, uh, now, let me discuss about uh, discuss about the uh, degree of reduction. What do you mean by degree of reduction? Degree of reduction is basically it is the, the free electron present in a in the in any kind of reactant or product. Now, question come uh, how you calculate the free electrons? Because, uh, because we considered that carbon if you if you look at carbon what is uh, the, uh, carbon it has 4 electrons in the outermost orbit. So, you can take 4 more electron we consider C 4 plus. Now, in case of hydrogen we can consider it is 1 plus am I right. Now, in case of uh, this uh, uh, oxygen. Uh, it usually take two electrons, so it is 
mi minus. So, the 4 electrons can go out, 1 electrons can go out. So, it is plus and this since it can take 2 electrons, we can we can add nitrogen. Uh, what we can write that uh, in the outermost orbit it, 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 uh, it can take 3 electrons. So, it is 3 minus. So, you know that that we, we can write like this. Now, if you now if you if you if you this is I told you this is uh, this is the formula of uh, glucose and uh, one gram atom. The how if you do the electron balance uh, free electron, but this is four plus two minus two because two into one because this is basically two into one, so it is coming around four. So four is the free electrons. So degree of reduction basically it deals with that uh, how much free electron present in the particular uh, uh, substrate molecule. Now, uh, suppose if we for ammonia, uh, carbon dioxide and water, we consider the degree that degree of reduction is 0, that is the free electron is 0. So, when we write, so we can, we can, we can suppose we, we, we write an empirical equation like substrate plus, uh, plus uh, oxygen give the uh, kind of product or you know biomass, you can say biomass, so uh, plus carbon dioxide. So, you know that we can we can we can write the balance equation how much that you know free electron present in the substrate, how much free electron present in the oxygen molecules, how much present in the biomass, how much the this is will be 0. So, maybe if, if some product is there then you product you find out that how much free electron. So, we can write a balance equation that uh, particular that I shall show you how you can do that. Now, here I have uh, so, so let, let us go here this is you see the degree of reduction is defined as the number of free electrons uh, in that quantity of the material contains 1 gram at of carbon. Now, biomass that you know if you, if you look at look at the biomass that uh, this is biomass where this is the formula of biomass C H P O N N A N Q. Now, if you look at this uh, that how you do this balance the 4 1 p 1 hydrogen and 2 n that is oxygen and 3 q is the nitrogen. So, uh, this is uh, this is how you can write the this uh, nitrogen and the free electron balance for with respect to uh, biomass. So, it is uh, we, we express the gamma b. Now, product similarly we can we can write the balance in case of process product if you if you look at the product that uh, the product uh, also you have this formula that uh, uh, product has the, the, the so what will the product that is uh, that is this is this is the product so this is four plus r minus uh, 2s minus 2t this is this is how we can we can write the and similarly substrate we can find out this now where the number of free electron taken 4 for 1 um, atom of carbon and 1 for hydrogen minus 2 for oxygen and minus 3 for nitrogen this we shall have to remember and no free electrons of the metabolized in products um, that uh, uh, in products we have like uh, carbon water, carbon dioxide, ammonia, while oxygen O2 except four electrons. Now, here we, I, I have given some typical examples of elemental composition of uh, different biomass. I can, I can, this is the different uh, like Acerosia coli, this is the empirical formula we have, then Klebsiella aerogenous like uh, Klebsiella aerogens. So, different type of uh, and you know that respective degree of freedom. So, I ask uh, all of you, uh, you can do the exercise and try to find out whether you are getting this value or not in, in case of different types. So, so but this is the different and that is why on the basis of that we, we select 
that uh, average composition empirical con formula of the biomass is a C H 1.79 O 0.5 and N uh, 0.2. Now, in case of Vesersia coli that uh, if you look at this is the formula that we have just now we have found out and uh, what will be the free electrons? This is 4 oh, then 1.777 into 1 then 2, uh, 2 into 0.49 and 3 into point zero. So, it is coming about 4.07. So, I hope it is clear to you. Now, we similarly we have done some uh, degree of reduction calculation with respect to some uh, substrate molecule like alkanes, alcohol, carbohydrate and organic acid. This is this has come like that you can practice. Now, uh, oxygen demand how you can calculate because uh, this is very important. So, uh, so I have already shown that you know our uh, that uh, common equation is this, this is substrate plus ammonia plus oxygen, it gives biomass product carbon dioxide and, and uh, now if we, if, we, if we do the balance, this is with respect to substrate, this is the degree of reduction of substrate, then uh, we know that uh, 1 O 2 can accept 4 electrons. So, it I can write B moles of O 2 that is B into point, point 0.4 minus 4 and then Y C is the Y C moles of one Y C gram atom of biomass. So, this is Y C gamma B and Y P gamma P. So, I can write that oxygen demand, this is B is the oxygen demand, we can calculate like this. Now, again uh, if we divide both side by gamma S, we will get uh, uh, that you know that uh, like this the now 4 B 4 B by gamma S is considered as the fraction this considered the fraction available electron transferred from substrate to oxygen. And this is uh, this similarly this is we consider the fraction available electron transferred to substrate to biomass this is biomass and this is product. So, again this is fraction of electron that is uh, transferred to or substrate to this is biomass. So, you know that, so this is oxygen, this is substrate, this is product, this is the how electrons are transferring. So, we have three different portions here. Now, this uh, you know if you look at previous one that you know this particular uh, this portion if you look at this portion this is this is called energetic growth yield and this is the, like this this is this is eta the y c gamma p by y, y gamma s we consider that this is called energetic growth yield this is how we can write it. Now, if you if you if you go through that uh, uh, second portion, that uh, uh, here we can we can find out this portion. This portion we call energetic product yield. If you if you look at this is this is called energetic product yield. So, energetic product yield y p gamma p by gamma s that we, we can we can do that like this. Now, another another way we can we can differentiate we can differentiate this biomass product and substrate that is on the basis of what weight fraction of carbon weight fraction of carbon because let me explain that. that uh, suppose that I was talking about uh, glucose, glucose is C H 2 
Oh, H2. So, uh, gamma fraction, that uh, weight fraction of carbon. So, what is the atomic uh, weight of uh, 12? And what is the molecular weight? 12 plus 2 plus 16. So, this ratio is the weight fraction of carbon. So, you know that uh, I can you can you can do it very easily. So, this is similarly in, the, in case of biomass, I can do that in case of product, we can do that, we can do in case of substrate. Now, biomass yield that another very interesting thing that is, uh, let me explain that. Now, biomass yield is very interesting y x by s is what is what is equal to mass of mass of cells per mass of substrate consumed. Now, now this is this is now this is equal to actually this is equal to eta sigma s gamma s then we have gamma b and sigma b. b stands for biomass. Now, question ka how this equation has come. Now, this we can easily find out that uh, like this that if you if you if you look at uh, the eta, eta we have already seen the eta, eta equal to y c into gamma b by gamma s. Am I right? So, here if you put y c gamma b by gamma s multiplied by you, you have gamma s sigma s and gamma b and sigma b. So, uh, this the gamma gamma b and gamma b will cancel and this this will cancel. So, what will basically we have this is we have equal to y c into sigma s by sigma b and if you if you what is the, this this is the atomic weight of carbon by molecular weight or gamma atom of substrate this is the atomic weight of carbon by gamma atom of biomass now if one, when you do that your biomass will go there and you multiply by that you will find you will you will come across this this equation you will come across so you can easily find out how it has come so this is how it has come this is Now, similarly, we we can we can calculate that uh, other thing also. That y y x by s is like this, and uh, then y p by s is like this. Uh, epsilon p gamma s gamma gamma uh, sigma s gamma s sigma b gamma b. So, p this uh, this with respect to product we can find out. So, and gamma y p by s is equal to p minus p 0 s 0 minus s. So, we can easily calculate that. So, you know that in another thing I want to point out in case of biochemical system thermodynamics yield coefficient that coefficient efficiency of the process plays very important role. Now, in thermodynamic efficiency uh, in case of aerobic system it varies it varies from 0.5 to 0.6 and in case of anaerobic system 0.7 now this will help us to find out the validity i told you the stoichiometry help us to find out the validity of the experimental results so this will help us and another thing i told you that uh, stoichiometry also determined how much heat evolved in the biochemical process the q equal to 4 q0 into b and the Q0 is equal to 133 kilojoule per equivalent of free electron transferred into B. So, this unit is kg per gamma atom substrate consumed. Now, if you divide 
this uh, this you can convert into uh, if you divide by molecular weight of substrate then it will be heat evolved per gram of substrate consumed now if you divide by yield coefficient you can easily find out how much heat is evolved per gram of <coughs> the cell mass production so this is uh, this is uh, uh, this is the what i want to tell about the preliminary part of stoichiometry and uh, here we get the information that uh, how we can develop the intermolecular relationship with respect to elemental balance with respect to electron and proton balance and then we find out that <laughs> validity of the experiment result because on the basis of this thermodynamic yield coefficient i just show you in the next uh, couple of uh, lectures and also we can find out the amount of heat revolve in this process thank you very much